Hello and welcome everyone to our January um, parent workshop. This is uh, English as a new language workshop for our parents um, to have an idea of what's going on in school, how your children are being taught English, um, the skills and tricks and things that will make things just jive for them in order to be able to learn the language well um, and quickly. Um, this is a series, um, so we will be meeting um, two more times after today um, so we can continue to explore. And we hope that some of the tips that our amazing um, ENL teachers um, do give you can be applied at home for yourself as well. So I'm going to introduce Ms. Rayo and Ms. Laveglia, who are our presenters for today. Um, and they have the floor. So welcome, ladies. Thank you so much for giving us some of your time um, to be able to um, you know, share with us some helpful tips. You guys are amazing. The kids love you so much. Um, so I'm glad that we get to do this together. So take it away. Thank you, Ms. Shepherd. Good morning, and thank you for joining us today for our ENL Parent Workshop. My name is Ms. Rayo, and I am one of the ENL teachers here. This is Ms. Lavelia. She's also a part of the ENL team. And we're here today to share some ideas and activities that you can do at home to help your child learn English. Please save any questions that you have for the end. Thanks again for taking time out of your day to be here. It is important to speak to your child every opportunity that you have. It can be in your native language or in English. When a child is fluent in their native language, they have an easier time learning the new language. Try to encourage your child to talk about their day. After school, ask open-ended questions like what was your favorite part of the day? What did you do during recess? Or even what makes you happy? And let them tell you all about it. Maybe you'd like to share some childhood stories from your native country. Kids love to be told stories and you can make storytelling fun and memorable by telling your child about how you grew up and the things you enjoyed doing. You could also try to get your child to help you in the kitchen, have them read you the recipe. You can discuss fractions and teach them how to use measuring cups. Teaching them verbs such as wash, pass, cut, peel and mash will help increase their vocabulary. Making food and cooking fun has many benefits and will help your child learn many new vocabulary words. Singing is a fun and motivating way to learn lots of new vocabulary words. Children naturally enjoy singing songs, whether it's in English or their native language. You can sing with your child while you're cooking, when you're walking to school or even driving in the car. When you sing songs that contain repetition or choruses, they get a lot of practice with these new words. The ABC chant is a great song to help kids learn their alphabet, and in no time, they will be reciting it on their own. They can also learn about animals by singing Old MacDonald Had a Farm. Um, the song Head, Shoulders, Knees, and Toes will teach them body parts. These are songs your child is going to want to sing over and over again. Watching television shows can be another great way for your child to learn new words and improve their English skills, including listening comprehension and vocabulary building. Even adults may find these shows helpful for learning English alongside your child. Some TV shows that focus on literacy or English language skills are Author and Sesame Street on PBS and Dora the Explorer on Nickelodeon. For older children, you may want to turn on the subtitles so your child can even read along. Good morning, Ms. Lavelle here. Um, I'm going to speak to you about a couple of things that you could do to support your uh, child or children at home. Um, so one of the important things to know is that everything that we do here at school, we you know, hope that it transfers over at home. And we wanted to give you some tips on how to support your children at home. So um, creating a healthy um, homework environment with healthy habits is really important at a very, very early age. Um, it's important to have a spot that has no distractions, a spot that's quiet, 
perhaps like a desk or a table or somewhere where they can um, sit on their own and be able to begin their homework. Um, the other um, important thing is that you're there to support your child if he needs support. However, just um, not really doing it for them, but just being there to give them the support. It's important because when our students come back to us in school, we need to see what they've um, been able to actually understand and translate. So it's important for us to know exactly where they at so we can differentiate their instruction for them in the classroom, we teach them what they need to learn. So it's super important to allow them the space, even if you see them maybe making some mistakes, allow them the space to do that so we can support them here when they come back to school. Um, however, you definitely are a support and you can offer to help your child. So for example, if they're having uh, trouble with mathematics, you can use things around the help house to help them count. So you can cut up some straws, you can um, use them to help you practice with counting, with addition, with subtraction. Um, if they're having a snack, let them count out how many grapes they eat or how many cookies they eat to um, help them with their mathematics. So another great way to really help your child, and again, it doesn't always have to be sitting at a table or at a desk, is you take them outside and we begin to work on vocabulary skills. So we do a lot of work here on vocabulary as well with the uh, ENL team and your child, but there's definitely ways that you can help your child at home. So um, the top things is uh, working on vocabulary skills, working on prepositions, which are usually super duper hard, and also labeling items. So those are like the three top things. So I'll kind of go into a little bit of detail on um, what that actually means. So you can actually take your child to the grocery store, perhaps prior to going to the grocery store, maybe making a list for them. So this way they can help you locate the things that you need. Um, practicing prepositions is also huge. So if you're in the supermarket, having them help you find something above the milk, something below the carrots, something on the bottom shelf between the pretzels and the chips, maybe next to the apples. Ask them to point out the smallest fruit, the biggest fruit, the red, yellow, the uh, green apple, the yellow apple. Um, all of these things are, are tremendous tools to help them with their vocabulary skills and with their ELA skills. Um, labeling is another great way to help them remember vocabulary. You can use your home to label everything. We do a lot of labeling here in the classroom. Most of the teachers have their classroom labeled when there are students that are ENL. Um, you can do the same thing in your home. You can label different parts of your home, like for example, the kitchen, label your refrigerator, label your stove, your microwave, your table, um, and then their own space where they are, their bedroom. Label the bed, the pillow, the closet, some of their favorite toys. So Ms. Rayo is gonna flip to the next screen so you could just see some examples of that. So you see very simple, it's not anything tremendous, just like an index card or paper that actually labels the words in English. Kitchen, bathroom, um, inside the cupboards, all things like that. And again, we know that it's important what they learn in school, however, Taking it outside of home is also a great idea as well. So when you're in the car in places that you're in every single day, you can write sight words and like label sight words, multiplication tables. Again, just put them on index cards, hang them in the car. Um, so when you're with your child and they're in the back seat, have them read the words, have them say the letters, have them practice the sounds. Um, have them practice their multiplication tables. Practice this reading, spelling, and memorizing all the words or multiplication tables with your child. Um, again, let's move out into the community. So there are some great resources out into the community. Your public library would be a great place to start. So Ms. Rayo put two libraries that are within our area that um, have a tremendous amount of books, obviously, but there's also a bunch of resources as well. So whenever you walk into either library right at the door, right on the left side of the door, you're going to see a big, huge uh, corkboard. And on that corkboard, you're going to find 
everything from community activities that are going on. Um, I've seen ENL resources for parents and their child to go to together. So there's a plethora of resources on that board that you could refer to. There's also, again, tons of books. So even if your child is not reading 100% just yet or they're working on these skills, we still can, you could still help them at home. So you guys can pick out as many books as you want and pick a book and have them look at the pictures. So customarily literacy starts with pictures. So when you are looking at these books, look at the pictures, ask your child what's happening in the picture. What do you think might happen next? Goes right along with making the predictions, getting their thinking going. How do you think the book is gonna end? Right. And then you can have your child maybe look to find and recognize words and letters from the things that you've been doing outside in the grocery store, things that maybe they recognize from the car, things that they recognize in the classroom. So kind of transferring it all over to make it, um, you know, a full transfer of the language. Um, also, when you have books, ask them questions, ask them to retell the story. Um, when you get to the end of the book, what happened at the end of the book? What was the ending of the story? How would you do it differently? So if a character did something that, you know, ended a certain way, how would you do it if you were that character? Um, and then finally, you could, again, continue to take um, other subject areas like math and science outside of your home. So spend time outside. I know it's cold, but spend some time outside. You can practice math with your child. You can count leaves. You can count acorns. You can count squirrels. You can count ants on the floor, whatever it is that you would, um, that interests you. Um, you can also do science lessons when you're out there. So science is based on observation. So observe the trees, the clouds, the weather. How do you feel? Is it cold? Is it hot? Do you think it might rain? Do you think it might snow? Why? What do you notice around you? When you come home, you can tie all this together by drawing a picture of the things that you observed and things that you saw on your nature walk. So kind of pulling all of these things together would be super resources to help your child learn the language. Thank you, Ms. Lavalia. So those are just some of the ways that you can be involved in your child's education and your participation at home ties what your child learns in school to a real world environment. The work that your family does at home to support and reinforce what your child is doing in school will have a significant academic impact. Please feel free to email us if you do have any questions and thank you so much for joining us today. Back to Ms. Sheffrey. So that was really fabulous. Um, and I'm gonna tell you why I thought it was so fabulous. Not just cause you guys did it, but that's how I learned English myself. Um, my mom had obviously came here and I was born here, but my mom needed her business to teach me Spanish first so I could communicate with my family and my neighbors. So when I got to school, I didn't speak um, a, a, not even a little bit. <laughs> like my TV was in Spanish and my radio and everything I read and everything I did was in Spanish. So I was completely monolingual when I got to school. So this is really how my teachers and my ENL teacher, which back in the day was ESL teacher, um, taught me to speak English. And ironically enough, I did the reverse with my children. My children learned English first, and this is how I taught them Spanish. I have hung Spanish words all over my house um, so they can recognize and read it. So these, this process does work and you're obviously going to fine tune it to all the likes and, and you know, comforts of your child and yourself. Um, so thank you so much um, for sharing this information with us. Um, you're on your way to being an amazing bilingual speaker and for some of our students, trilingual and multilingual because our kids are very talented, especially in this building. Um, so I hope these tips helped. And if there is nothing more, we will see you um, on the next date. I'm gonna resend out the email with all the information. We will continue on this virtual setting um, to keep us safe, but still connected. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye everybody, have a great Bye. day. Bye, Bye, Mr. Muzaffar. Thanks for coming. Yes, thank you so much. Bye-bye. <laughs>